everybody, today on the camera department slash post house, we're gonna project some GH5 footage up onto a theatrical movie screen using a laser, la laser, laser. That's right, we're gonna use a 4K laser projector to throw it up on the screen. How well do you think that GH5 footage holds up? Begin laser ignition sequence. All right, so we just got wind, or got word rather, cut wind, whatever. We got word we can go look at heirloom projected on a 4K laser. So we gave him a 4K print. We're gonna go check out a 4K laser. Come on, let's go check it out. Yeah. Just have to wait for the playlist to play it. The big old projector up there. There we go. All right, okay. I'm good with that. Okay. Get somewhere in here. I'm st the largest triangle is the REC 2020 color space. As we talked about, we're just gonna kind of give a uh, quick, just a thought process. What we got to see was uh, GH5, 4K anamorphic footage, not scaled up, presented yeah. properly in 4K. Actually 6K anamorphic. Technically 6K yeah. high-res anamorphic footage displayed. At 4K. At 4K. Um, and we got to see it on one of two laser projectors, the only two uh, currently working in the United States at this particular model. It's an NEC. Um, so we saw a projected 4K laser. Right before we watched that, we were watching uh, some of Wonder Woman, and we watched some of that. Yeah. And Wonder Woman... Uh, Pretty so amazing going, looking. It looked great. Really? But going from Wonder yeah. Woman to Heirloom, uh, I'm going to make that comparison and make my statement first. I actually thought they looked pretty similar in terms of tone. Uh, there was a little yeah. more contrast. Again, people separate. I'm talking yeah. about technical no, 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 only no. here. Yeah. The tone, when the grade was right, and that's not a slam on you, no, when the grade was right it's in a slam on me for me. it was like the caves and all that stuff. It yeah. was on no, it was par yeah. with anything we saw in Wonder Woman. Yeah. We had some soft shots, but so did Wonder Woman. I, I just watched it. Oh, it does, yeah. The crazy thing about Wonder Lots Woman and Heirloom was the noise, yeah. the grain, if you will. The grain that is in Wonder Woman was very close to the grain in Heirloom. Yeah, it was very prominent compared to uh, what I've seen it in uh, P3. Yeah. It was way more. So, yeah. So that 2020 definitely is something to consider. It lifts up the grain aspect for sure. Yeah, from a projecting standpoint, definitely. Yeah. I haven't seen it anywhere else that we've put our 4K or HDR footage. Right. You know, 2020. Well, we've seen it on HDR. Yeah, exactly. But I don't see it, it much, that much. You don't see it that much on HDR. Uh, it could just be the laser compared to a bulb. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Uh, who knows? Um, but the I'll, sharpness, when something out. is sharp, it is sharp. Yeah, and when it's out of focus, it is out And of when focus. it's out of focus, it is damned out of focus. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, I think now looking at it, uh, we have more content to produce for this client that has these projectors, so we have to now consider yeah. a different workflow, which is part of why we're excited about the Sumo. Yes. Um, being able to have that bigger monitor to grade in 2020, I think it's going to make a huge difference. Yes. Uh, we have not... There's no reason for us to do anything HLG wise because we can do not it for him, not at all. Yeah, yeah. It's not HDR, so there's no, no there's no metadata. Yeah, yeah. It's just pure 2020. It looks good when the colors hit and everything's right. It was good. What was, uh -huh. what was your takeaway from Panasonic 4K laser projection? How do you feel about it? Question my own sanity a little bit. Yeah. Um, it did bring back some. I had some butterflies, not from seeing brought, it, yeah. but that emotion of like, oh my god, we're never going to get this right. Problem, yeah, it like reminds all the problems me of that in the eighteen twenty hour days of yeah. we can't do this. No, we can do it. No, we can't do it. Yeah, right. Um, and if you guys don't know what we're talking about, uh, watch any of the heirloom behind the scenes stuff, and you'll see it. I mean, there'll be a link somewhere, but yeah, yeah. It was the only thing we we never BTSed our panic stricken post process <laughs> we should we have, have actually we didn't have time it was too brutal uh yeah and overall i thought it, it went pretty great you know it i mean was, we it was one of the most nerve-wracking reviews and we didn't it wasn't a review for producers or distributors or right. anything uh so it yeah it brought back the butterflies in that aspect what actually makes me feel really good yeah it, it, i miss it, it. 
it gives me a lot of confidence back in, in yeah. not that my confidence waned, but I mean, again, for a $2,000 camera, we just projected yeah. it on the highest resolution projection on, on the masses, the highest resolution yeah. mass projection for theatrical releasing. This was, we made a DCP, we did all those steps, yep. and it was good. I think if it were an hour and a half long, it would have felt like any other movie. Then, you, yeah. then you're getting into terms of budget of spending, have, yeah, actors exactly. and all that junk. I it mean, would. just as a camera test, we as just a small little piece, yeah. I mean, great. and it worked. Yeah, it, it totally does. worked. Um, <coughs> the big thing that it drew for me was my disappointment in uh, 6K output. Yeah. In the camera. Yeah, yeah. In all honesty, we've talked about that. I know, but it I mean, just reaffirms. That it feeling. reaffirmed my. Yeah, yeah. It brought that feeling back about God. I love what this camera can do, but I also hate it. Yeah, for what it can do. At some point, we're going to try and test, uh, get our hands on a GH5S, and then yeah. test that up against the screen. Just because the reason it's fun to see something projected that large is all of the detail retains. Uh, it also starts to illustrate more things that you may have missed, and that's just from having done movies. This is like Jeff and I have screened out of our own projects, feature films, million Screen dollar plus many. feature films, two million, whatever. Of those movies, I've screened them all in in the theater except for one, and I don't need to screen uh, screen that one. Mm -hmm. There's no reason yeah, for no, it. There's... But I've seen, I've done all the other ones on on a large well, screen. I did Phoenix. Kind of, we kind of did do that one. Uh, oh, we did show it at Max's, didn't we? No, we showed it. Oh, we showed it here. That's right. So I have seen them all on a big screen. And the funny thing yeah. that happens is all the details, the problems stand out more. Um, problems definitely stand out The narrative out more. changes. Suddenly yeah, the does. narrative feels different um, because it's like this, at least to me, there's this big... It can change both good and bad because yep. like with Heirloom in there, the music kick... Oh, it's end. way better. Yeah, it's way better on a big screen. I actually with, felt with it words. worked better. It felt more it like did. a movie to me. It did. It than... felt way better on that than it did on YouTube. It did. It was way better of an experience seeing it there than on YouTube. It was. And it was made for YouTube. It was. So, damn it, we uh, suck at making videos for YouTube. We should just stay on the big screen. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Somebody, if you want to do a film, Jeff and Drew, I would say this. I would say if you're a filmmaker and you are making a serious narrative or documentary or short and you can afford it, find a way to do it, have a friend yeah, that has an indie theater. find a way theater, to project it large. Do it. Just yeah. not, don't do it as the premiere. Do it before you completely finish the yeah. movie. Uh, do it so that you think you're done and then project it and then yeah. watch it and be like, dadgummit, i got to start this three sequences over again. I would say do it when you think you have audio finalized, when you think you have color finalized, and when you think you have story finalized. Yeah, it's a huge uh, pro tip. It'll change. Hopefully you can get all three where you think it's finalized at the same time so you only <laughs> have to watch it once or twice. It's expensive to play it on the screen. But uh, it definitely changes everything. Yeah. Um, so if anyone's ever yeah. questioned the idea, can a GH5 be a theatrical uh, uh, product? Oh, it totally can. It totally can. That yeah. just proved it. I mean, we literally, uh, I'm pretty sure, what, what did they shoot um, Wonder Woman on, I wonder? I wonder. Uh, whoa, 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 I do whoa, wonder. Whoa, I'm pretty whoa. sure it's Alexis, but uh, it could have been filmed. It could uh, have I think it was film, Alexa. I think it's Alexa. Wonder Woman director Patty Jenkins had a very specific reason for shooting on film. So let's say it was. Yeah. The, the Alexa... Uh, and, we can seeing look it up it, and then looking directly on. at the, I don't know, I'll probably post look it up and just put it down here what it was filmed yeah. on. But the the Alexa, if it was what Wonder Woman was filmed on, and then looking at Panasonic GH5, yeah. again, when things were perfect on the GH5, which meant we nailed the grain patterns are different. The grain uh, patterns are different, but they still but look different similar. Cameras. You could have uh, blended those together. You no, could have cross cut it. Yeah. Uh, visually. The, the biggest thing that I saw from our standpoint, GH5, was. Uh, when we shot stuff specifically for 1600 ISO. Yeah. And then you can definitely tell it was shot at 1600 ISO. Yeah, that is true. Uh, it's stuff that we shot under the requirements of what we were shooting. So uh, we had to do it. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, personally, that'd be one thing I'd change about how we shot. Add some more light in. Yeah. yeah. Add some more light in and shoot it at a lower ISO. Yeah, probably 800 because 800 works great on it too. Yeah. Well, again, though, if we had the GH5s 2500 native, we would have exactly. been in a much better boat. Yeah. Um, uh, it does. That's a that's a reasoning for it. And we didn't use IBIS on that at all. We had no. it turned off. We didn't at all. There was none. So. Didn't use it on. Well, couldn't use it on that lens. Uh, didn't use it on the camera at all. No, it wasn't used at all. Yeah. 
um, just had to go old school and, and operate. So yep. I get why people want it and all that. So that's a separate tangent. We've already got that episode done. All right, so that's it. We just wanted to give you guys a heads up. We yep. have now seen uh, GH5 footage. Uh, projected via a 4K laser, one of two in the United States that are installed and currently running. We compared it against Wonder Woman um, by accident, kind of. I mean, we just yeah, it was it really playing. Was by accident, but we got to compare one. it against Wonder Woman. Yeah. We've seen it firsthand. We we've learned from it. Um, does the GH5? Just final answer. Does the GH5 stand up on the big screen? Jeff Worley says, "Yeah, you could shoot a movie with it." Drew Hall says, "Yes." Uh, haters say no, but we don't care what they say. The baby seals, they're going to say it doesn't work, but I'm telling you, we've just seen it. I could tell you that though, before we even watch that. I could have too, but I just wanted to affirm it. It's nice to see it literally yeah. projected that large. It is. You get to see more of the problem areas and the positives of the cameras. Absolutely. When it's blown up. Absolutely. So. so again, GH5 for web delivery is equally, I mean, oh, yeah, it's, it's great. It's on par with the rev, the yeah. red. Seriously. The rev. The rev. Uh, it's on par with the red in that space. I mean, again, you're talking about sensor and all that stuff. It changes yeah. by depth and all that. I get it. I'm just saying from a sensor technology standpoint, space. a yeah. broad stroke technology to a broad stroke technology, they both worked really well. I'm sure the Sony would look great up there. All of them would if you yep. shoot it correctly. So at the end of the day, I think any of these tools, if handled correctly from start to finish, from pre-production yeah. all the you way through that final frame and post, you can yep. take anything and put it up on a big screen if you think about it before you start shooting. You can. You just got to figure out the different ways that you have to make your camera work for you. That's it. That's, That's it. it. All right, don't forget to like, subscribe, share. If you like crazy, stupid things like, hey, should we project 4K laser GH5 footage? That's what we do on this show. Yeah. Who knows what else we'll do on this channel? We're insane. Jeff has a beard. Goodbye. 4K laser. 4K laser. That's a 4K laser. <laughs>